Hi, this is Charu. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the new moon that is happening on 13th of January at 23 degree Capricorn. We're going to talk about what's going to pan out over the course of next two weeks as a consequence of the new moon that's happening right now and how to leverage it to the best of our capacity. New moon is always when sun and moon come together and that's the time to sow the seed for something new. Usually a day or two after the new moon when the moon becomes a little bit visible that's the best time to initiate or start something which we want to grow over the course of next six months. The steps are taken over the course of next two weeks to grow that into a full growth enhancer over the course of next six months. Capricorn is all about growing something that is material, that serves you structurally over a long term. Capricorn is about planning. It is about creating something which is material in nature, which is resourceful, which is very, very focused which is very specific, looking at solidifying something, maturing something, bringing something to fruition over the course of next six months. This is about willfully doing something because Pluto is involved here. So our will, our grit, our strength, our ego, our inner self who is driving you to a specific direction is very much involved in this new moon. This is going to be a little bit of an intense process over the course of next two weeks because we have very, very volatile aspects, which I mentioned to you middle of last year, since May of 2020, I've been speaking about the period that we are in right now, which is the Uranus cycle with Saturn and Jupiter, five planets in Aquarius making a square with Mars and Jupiter. That's happening now in January and will continue all the way till February. So January and February are going to be volatile time. But Capricorn New Moon are about creating stability in this volatility that serves you well in the longer duration. Taking the zest that is existence that is existing in the current volatility because every volatility has release of energy and directing that release of energy into something that is more worthwhile your time that is more worthwhile your progress that is going to help you materially and meticulously working towards that over the course of next uh, next six months with two weeks next two weeks being the specific duration when you'll be sowing the seeds of that and this is not something new the 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 new moon is happening on the degrees where Saturn and Pluto came together at the start of 2020. So at the start of 2020, when Saturn and Pluto came together and we sort of initiated the whole process that 2020 was for all of us, the very fabric of our existence, as I had been talking about a year prior to 2020, telling you about that the Saturn and Pluto are coming together in the sign of Capricorn for the first time since 15th century. Last time Saturn and Pluto came together in Capricorn was when churches were divided. That process that initiated with the churches getting divided was not limited to the year that happened. That started a progressive step, a new cycle of life altogether. The very fabric of our existence was reset with that and now with 2020 the same has happened in your personal capacity when Saturn and Pluto come together Saturn is stability Pluto is disruptor Saturn is structure Pluto is truth time so the blocked energy that has been blocked behind archaic structure for a very long time that comes out violently through an outburst when Saturn and Pluto come together. This is the blocked energy that leads to violent ex explosion and that was 2020 to some extent. And what happens as a follow to that is that it's, it's like a black hole after that. It sucks up everything, things, people, events, devices, things which don't serve you. And that was the process that we are sort of in, even in the middle of at this time. What 
is following that is the uranus cycle uranus is about the new it's about the change it's about anarchy it's about freedom it's about detaching ourselves from the old reality and moving very very progressively at a speed of its own into the new reality so the jupiter uranus cycle and the saturn uranus cycle that are getting kick-started in january 2021 and february 2021 are all about explosive energy to make us quickly go life-changing energy that is quickly going to proceed take us from the old reality to the new reality with the speed we have not seen before when jupiter and uranus come together which is happening on 17th of january and the heliocentric uh, uh, square will happen on 1st of february uh, basically heliocentric is when you look at it from the perspective of sun and from a uh, from a global events perspective that is considered to be the time when we transition from one phase to another so you will see the global events really shift after 1st of february in that direction when jupiter and uranus they come together this is a cycle which is known to expand us expand our knowledge expand our consciousness to help us with quick adaption a qu quick adoption of discoveries quickly embracing new realm of knowledge it's like accelerated changes and they're made big by jupiter in terms of its impact as well as in terms of how it affects us in our growth so there is a quick adoption of new ideologies knowledge of a new type it's like you'll see that this is speeding up your own life process when the cycle is unfolding over the course of january and february you'll find yourself shifting very very progressively from the old life to the new life and this cycle is not coming alone this is a nested cycle what does that mean cycles of these planets which means that when jupiter and uranus are dancing with each other and saturn and uranus are dancing with each other these are external planets how they interact with each other those cycles are called synods so these two cycles of jupiter uranus and saturn uranus they are intermingled with each other because saturn is making a square with uranus in february and jupiter is making a square with uranus in january so these are two cycles which impact global events and they're happening back to back in january and february right after the explosion of saturn pluto of blocked energy being released leading to violent outburst so imagine it being black hole which is sucking away the old and the big bang happening right after that at which a new world is given birth to essentially jupiter and uranus gives us the knowledge the expand the quick learning curves the quick adoption even the openness to some extent of the society to accept the new world and it helps support the saturn uranus cycle saturn uranus cycle is all about supporting the structural changes the government changes the changes in the way we govern the rules and the regulation that change to support the innovation which is going to come in february when saturn and uranus come saturn tries to control the explosion it tries to control and create rules around the innovation and that will come through the course of 2021 because saturn is going to be with uranus three times during the course of 2021 so there will be regulations and rules which will be put on the innovation on the anarchy on the explosion but in your personal capacity it will give you the discipline to bring something that is very very innovative very much out of the uh, out of the norm uranus is, is everything that is brilliant about you that is different about you that sets you about that is free about you when you're free of others how you behave and what you want to do is all that uranus is your own unique ideas is what uranus is your unique individuality is what uranus is so saturn tries to take all that uniqueness the craziness the experience the need for freedom and it tries to contain that into a structure so you can actually be abundant out of that and you can contribute to the society with it 
so this is both of these cycles are actually very very fruitful they are very very beneficial especially jupiter and uranus cycle even though right now it may not feel like that because they're making a hard aspect and uh, changes which are positive for us they're coming in a hard way so even though the jupiter uranus cycle which is supposed to be progressive which is supposed to stimulate optimism which is supposed to create faith in future opportunity for expansion but because it's a hard aspect it is coming with resistance but the ultimate goal is to bring progressive development is to bring advancement to support the society and the structural changes that are inevitable it helps us embrace the new realm of knowledge consciousness that is upon us and it expands our own mindset it accelerates our own mindset change so you'll find that the Uh, these interacting cycles they are going to cause an avalanche of events whenever there are two global cycles which interact with each other when they're nested with each other the events have a speed of their own so economic events currency events socio political events next gen internet new currency monetary shifts big adoption of technology new tech a uh, new healthcare all those things will happen with a speed but with the resistance with the pushback why is this relevant to the new moon that's happening today in capricorn these cycles they're happening at a time when capricorn new moon is trying to remind us to draw something out of 2020 2020 because it's happening at the degree where saturn pluto conjunction happen and 2020 happen so looking at how do we create an output an outcome a new start from 2020 is all that this new moon is about there might be a process maybe a career change maybe a structural change maybe a family structure change maybe a resources change that you might have been working over the course of last year this new moon brings a new cycle in that direction this is sort of a compensation or reward of the work done or the give and take between your individual contribution and what your society or your job or your career gives to you there's a balancing of accounts that happen but this is not passive energy capricorn is a cardinal sign we go after the things where capricorn is in our chart so this is an ambition an aim a growth a dream of a bigger life that you had in which you will take active steps driven by some emotional maybe even catalyst because pluto is involved here pluto is a external planet which shakes our core which shakes our emotions to some extent and it's with moon so uh, there's sort of an emotional stress to some extent which becomes an instrument for changing a redundant pattern and you'll feel that in yourself something within you which was set in stone which was sort of your identity or your must or the way you responded to situations or the way you called yourself like this is my identity this is who i am or anything that you used to draw your identity from when pluto comes with a new moon it resets that so it's almost like 2020 has brought you from a different past to a new version of you for the future a more powerful a more stable a more authentic a more true truthful truthful to yourself version of you so this would be instrumental for changing some redundant pattern which has been holding you back in your material progress it will change a pattern which was set in stone in the past or is set in stone in terms of the framework of your existence this is how i do things this is how i deal with authority this is who i thought i am as my title as my external identity and pluto restructures that and the events that happen in 2020 were consequential in bringing you from 
2019 to 2021. The transformation in that identity happened with that black hole that happened in 2020 that was supposed to suck away the inconsequential things and it was brutal but it happened to make you into who you are today and 2021 will be rapid progression to the next step to the new you and this new moon is where we start the process where the change will come from Change will come from intense feelings that cannot be rationalized anymore, that cannot be forgotten anymore, something you cannot adjust to anymore, something which used to be safe earlier and used to, used to believe that this is my comfort zone and I'll take comfort in being that, that safety is violated in some ways. It's torn apart. It's like a safe harbor which was also responsible for some weakness in your inner inner being and that sort of snaps out and it, it's like something unplugs when Pluto is the underlord it unplugs it it's the Kundalini release Pluto is the significant significator of Scorpio energy so this is everything that's below the surface, everything that's powerful about you. And when Pluto, Moon and Sun come together, it's like something just shifts uh, in you. And it comes from a deep emotional catalyst. And this is something that you sort of have been going back and forth in terms of restructuring over 2020. And now Pluto gives clarity. Pluto gives absolutism. Pluto is irreversible change in you so when that happens there is no going back to the old way of being as a person for you and if you want to see history the last eclipse of july 2019 happened at this point so you can look at the events between april 2019 to july of 2019 if something exactly ended for you and it took you 2020 to realize what was supposed to be created in place of that. It is like something, something may be closed for you around middle of 2019, around uh, between the period April to July or over the course of 2019. Because South Node was in Capricorn, we were releasing things and lunar eclipse takes away things uh, that are not part of our future structure. So something was released in 2019 and 2020 events to some extent pushed you into into really thinking what is absolute for you who are you as a person and what you want to be going forward because when we are reduced to bare bones to some extent and left to our own devices when we have to really forced to think about ourselves and in that whole process what's coming out of it it's it's said and this is not going to be isolated events right i mean uh, astronomers when they found black hole um, around earth uh, they were hiding in plain sight in fact in 2020 they found the closest black hole hiding in plain sight close to earth but they were sure when they saw one black hole that there will be more astronomers at that time they quoted that if i am in an ordinary uh, you know hotel and i have breakfast on the terrace and i see a hummingbird flying around then i can be sure that there must be many more hummingbirds in that area because my hotel is not a special place so if one black hole event has happened in 2020 there would be more saturn and pluto as i said when church was divided it was not a one year event it started a cycle of reconstruction of the society so we are just at the start the whatever happens in the first year of a cycle of of a new conjunction that continues that process continues for 30 years 30 year cycle is what happens there's progression in that the reality shifted in that direction but in that knowing that we are not going back to the old old way of being what do you want to become in that new world what is your identity capricorn is our identity capricorn is our external identity 
Capricorn is our achievement, our manifestation, our resource, resourcefulness to the world. What are we contributing? Who are we known as? What is what are we yielding in that world? And Capricorn is about taking responsibility, our place in the society, our ambition, our manifestation in the society. The <laughs> sign Capricorn and I'll talk a little bit about it because when there is a new moon in a specific zodiac sign we all feel the effect of that zodiac it's almost like our psyche all of us have Capricorn somewhere in our chart I irrespective of which zodiac sign you are in the wheel of our chart of our, zo of our um, birth chart zodiac uh, Capricorn occupies a space Capricorn is high and that part of your zodiac is getting highlighted right now so you you sort of live like a capricorn when you go through a new moon there is this whole attachment with the archetype of capricorn that they're cold uh, they, it's it's because you know when greeks um uh linked they they linked capricorn with gold and dark due to the winter in northern hemisphere so that zodiac has that attachment the original mythology of Capricorn was that of protector of people. This is the father, right? Capricorn is the representative of the authoritative father. So father is still the protector. It's the archetype I'm not getting into. Uh, women can also be authoritative. We're not going there. Just as an archetype. Tenth house, uh, for those who are interested in astrology, is the authority house so capricorn stands for 10th house the protector of the people was the original mythology god who was life-giving who was caring who was educating who was civilizing he was called god yeah he was the ruler of earth and he was given a mission by his brother who had suffered at the hands of their ruthless parents so there's always a connection with discord with parents when the capricorn sign is highlighted or discord with authority or whose authority of your life Capricorn sign always represents and many of the kids especially Capricorn rising they experience that in their life as well there's always some um, unless there's a beneficial planet in the fourth or the tenth house there's always this who's the authority of your life question that comes up and Capricorn um, so God Ea who is representative of Capricorn who was the ruler of, of earth he was given a mission as they had suffered at the hands of their ruthless parents who wanted to destroy human race his parents wanted to destroy human race myth goes that he started he saved human race so that's why the whole mythology of protector of people but myth goes as well that humans started to fail god ea and then his brother bell they sent a great deluge through the equinox to wipe out the whole population telling them you know this is this human race has not lived up to its potential it has not lived up to it has not honored the earth or the planet on which it survived it is it has not honored its existence so uh, there needs to be a wipe out of the population and they sent a deluge through the equinox to start a new world order. Gaudiya saved human race by urging them to build an ark. So he was the preserver of human race. So this new moon, if I may say, is a Hail Mary to some extent in, in that sense. It's in Gaudiya encourages us to learn the knowledge rather than stay blissfully ignorance in what we are doing. To earth, to humanity, to environment, to our existence and it sort of is a do over if we had to do it all over again what would we change and what has 2020 taught us to to do differently and it holds for our own personal life it, it holds for our own personal life for our life to hold more meaning because 2020 was like a reset sort of a death to self and now we have if we if we, ha we are here right now, we've been given a new lease on life and it's like commitment to a higher quality of this new life that we're going to live. So 
this new moon sort of sets us up on a new path to a higher quality of life after the reset and that's where we we are going to make a commitment and that's what this new moon is for making a commitment to self for a higher quality of our life going forward and that's exactly the degree of this new moon a commitment to a higher quality of life a woman entering a convent is how this was represented in sami astrology total commitment to a transcendent goal which is we have to dedicate our life this new life to one belief of returning back to why we came here for this is where we sort of make a commitment to ourselves to not be untrue to ourselves where we may make a commitment to ourselves to not waste our gifts where we make a commitment to ourselves to not short change our gifts as well this is where the manifestation of every resource that you have been given and it has to come come of use capricorn as a sign is resourceful it uses everything it has got and by the end of your life you want to be fully used you want to be fully used for every gift you have been given so it's a total commitment to a goal surrendering to karma to a higher law making sense of our experience in a more mature fashion taking sort of a stock of what has happened and coming back coming back to a more chast more honest side of ourselves without the lies without the excuses and finding our way back to ourselves the organic way of life and that's what we begin today that's where we start today so irrespective of the volatility and you have to look at the volatility as a catalyst to to move you quickly to move you out of comfort zone it it's like we getting if we, if we're getting too cozy it's not there's no growth this is where the growth comes from these are the cycles which progress the human human race saturn and aquarius which we are in now are known as periods of catalyst for human growth man was put on moon when saturn was uh, in aquarius we had uh, the the liquid polio vaccine when saturn was in aquarius and polio that helped polio eradicate it that eradic help us uh, eradicate polio consumer bill of rights was signed to protect consumers it started a new cycle world wide web was made available to public when saturn was in aquarius so when you see uh, volatility in the news have the eye on the price have the eye on the fact that uh, every long term evolution of mankind happened through these aspects and you and i get to write history you and i get to be alive in a moment where each one of us is making history so we also have the responsibility to use it wisely so good luck for that and good luck for the two weeks that are coming there are certain dates definitely which are volatile in the coming weeks and uh, and the coming month i'll give you a few of them and uh, you can <laughs> pretty much uh, note that for the whole of jan or february but i'll give you specific dates so there will be five planets in aquarius mercury jupiter saturn sun venus which will be squaring mars and uranus mars and uranus are coming together on 20th or 21st of jan right on inauguration day making a direct contact with us chart i spoke about that day since may of 2020 i've been talking about that day and we know that's going to be a volatile period and it will not end there it will continue beyond that because the full moon that is happening on 28th of january which is a full moon in leo comes with a t square fixed t square very very explosive energy so it will continue very well into february it will not be just inauguration day in your own personal capacity 
Mars Uranus is an energy that makes us sort of detached from the past. We can just stop doing something and it, these are fixed signs. So there's a fixity to the change that we are making. So you can choose the time Uranus is standing still now it's turning direct from 14th of Jan. When Uranus turns direct all the changes which were happening within us all the explosions that were happening within our heart they start panning out in terms of action external action we start taking steps so it's sort of we stand on that doorstep when you and i start taking action about all the things that you know they've been going in i need to make this change i need to stop doing this i need to make this change for my future growth i need to do this for my prosperity i need to do this to make use of my gifts i need to take care of my body i need to take care of the food that i intake i need to treat my body like the temple that it is those kind of things long term changes fixed changes Mars and Uranus together help us make. So 14th of Jan when Uranus turns direct that's the period when all of this starts happening and we can start taking active steps. You would in fact uh, I mean we we have the gift of Pluto right now it's the time to make those resolves. It's the time to change the things that a structural in our life and sort of make that resolve make a promise to yourself this is what you'll get out of the cycle and get on it get get on that because mars and taurus it's about dog headedness dog headedness you just you know you it's just like have blinders on and you just go after something it's consistent stable durable action towards a goal so give yourself a direction that's what capricorn helps us do it helps us get focused it's a earth energy it helps us think about our life in a more mature and stable way in this volatility by excluding the noise of the media excluding the noise of external parties what do i need to do for my freedom and for me to be able to really dedicate myself to a single cause how to be useful so um then 20th of jan is that mars uh, uranus conjunction you also have jupiter involved jupiter will expand everything so if you start something jupiter can very quickly gives you give you the means to do it it will expand your anger and to some extent you know restlessness as well but at the same time it's almost like you suddenly will see the positive steps as well so you'll see 23rd of jan is when mars and jupiter are together so ex big action it's not small actions like you go with full confidence into this this goal 23rd of jan is very good for like taking it big you know making it big um and to some extent you will find that uh, any of the things that are ang that are exciting anger in you Uh, which is not helpful that element also rises up try to channel that as i said these are emotional things which are going to drive us to do more following that 28th of january when we have the full moon sun and jupiter together beautiful energy to have it's a very a uh, very positive day when sun and jupiter comes together but it's coming with the full moon which has a t square so it's a good time to sort of bring an old pattern to closure and move forward move forward move forward 28th of january is when i know a lot of people are putting the seeds of something new for themselves i would suggest if you have to sign something or you have to start something do it before 30th of january because mercury will go retrograde on 30th of january it will actually be in shadow period from 15th of january itself but still it will be moving forward 30th of january onwards mercury will go retrograde till 20th of feb in aquarius so all the ideas mercury is in aquarius which is brilliant which is very good in thinking out of the box but those out of the box ideas will need some changes and corrections which will happen between 30th of jan to 20th of february so i would not suggest to sign something or initiate something or finalize something between 30th of jan to 20th of feb so that's the time when you want to sort of take <laughs> maybe a little bit of uh, rework or back seat to 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 get more ideas at that time 
so that that would be the time uh, i would avoid from financial decisions perspective 6th of february is definitely not a good time but you can get some new ideas venus will be making a square with uranus on 6th of february so be a little bit careful of that day other than that i would say uh, you know at the at the start of this month itself uh, things have initiated most of the month will be volatile over the course of next two weeks we have no planets retrograde so it's like things are going to be really moving really fast when none of the planets are retrograde everything is moving for forward things manifest very very quickly and you'll suddenly see oh nothing was moving and now everything suddenly starts you know panning out and giving results and 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 uh, sort of uh, moving forward closures essentially starts happening over the course of next two weeks results start coming outcomes start becoming visible so that's what i have for you i'll try to put in the comments by sign where capricorn is in your in your zodiac i had put it in the in the capricorn uh, new moon uh, video as well my voice doesn't keep up if i do longer videos than this so that's why i've been not able to do some videos in the past but let me try to uh, very quickly uh, talk about by sign okay and i'll try to put it down in the comments as well so uh, you can uh, you can look at it uh, uh, let me do it in the part two because this will become too long a video otherwise <laughs>